Here along the western face of the Hummingbird Pyramid, which is cut into by a river, we can clearly see the angles of all of the reinforcement blocks, which were originally located below the surfaces. We're now standing inside the structure that was originally built uh, piece by piece, apparently, in these rows, and you can clearly see the parallel lines and the consistent angles that were used over and over again. We do not see block forms with 90 degree angles um, oriented horizontally and vertically because those are the least stable for tectonic purposes. And so the angles we do see are ones carefully selected to increase the stability of these structures for earthquake and water wear, which in this region is very high. We've got a volcano just about 10 kilometers from here, inactive, and to still be here in this condition as we see them is quite remarkable. But as we look closely, we can make out parallel lines and artificial mold marks. Some of the edges fit into the cracks between other mold-made stones. These features are very characteristic of poured uh, cement structures. And the consistency of this angle is remarkable because it continues all the way around to the northern face, uh, the northeast corner we have another area exposed with this same angle uh, towards the east at about 65 degrees. The incline of the land is generally lowering towards the west, and that's why all of these structures are pointing in the same direction and leaning towards the east. So they're preventing the tectonic movement of this whole area, and this was designed because these foundations were in fact reinforcing the whole facade of the mountain that was reworked here in the similar way to what we see in Bosnia with pyramids that are not in fact built from the ground up but we're looking at a structure that was designed as refacading of a previously existing mountain. From the apex there appears to be an ascending walkway that will take you to further structures in this amazing pyramid complex.
Here on the northern face of the Hummingbird Pyramid, we've also discovered a foundation section that has been exposed, in this case by road work, where dynamite has been used to create the flat road surface. And on the side of the road here, we've just been cleaning the roots away. So the beauty of this stonework will be further uncovered with a lot more work, and we hope to invite everyone to participate in this excavation. We're looking at an area that um, we've spread out some of the artifacts that we found stacked and on their side over here to the right. And we've laid them out for viewing and for filming so that we can present the amazing features of these stones, which are located just above the columnar basalts uh, that we looked at earlier. And we're about uh, five meters above that area where we're finding this wall on its side. And it was a pavement area that you can clearly see the composition of the stone is the same, and yet the structure of the blocks themselves are different. We have a clear um, change, and this reflects the purpose uh, for which these stones were cast. These were artificially made by builders of this pyramid, and they were supporting a walkway with these pieces and shapes. And we've got various sections of walkway on their side, and we are now searching on different digs around the mountain for a walkway that is intact and that we can bring visitors to on a regular basis. The remarkable features of these stones stand out at you and really show a, quite a variety of forms that accomplish the same goals of tectonic stability, considered an architectural feature at this point. Once we find more walkways, we'll be able to confirm this amazing discovery. We found these shards, which appear to be part of a large clay jar. And upon inspection, we noticed in the back of them, there's a notch here where we can clearly see a machete. was Someone was cleaning the crops here, the yucca, and ended up chopping into this piece. But it didn't break. It's very strong ceramic. So this is an interesting piece that we're going to hopefully get a radiocarbon date for, as it appears to be a much more advanced geopolymer because of its hardness and composition which is different than the ceramic pieces that are well known on the surface layers up on the top of the pyramid, which are certainly less than a thousand years of age. This language and script was already deciphered by Professor Kurt Schildman as Paleo-Sanskrit. These symbols read as repeating vertical lines of glyphs that say, thundering, triple delivering, thundering, triple delivering. And in the Sanskrit language would read, Rauwa triadhi, Rauwa. Shildman's amazing decipherment offers us a key into the insight of the mind of the creators of these temples and leads us towards commonalities rather than divisive thinking in terms of human identity and our collective consciousness. Here we've got a locking feature where we can see the plate thickness is consistent from the top to the bottom on a flat plane and then it changes immediately and maintains consistency after that as well. So this feature would have been a locking feature and we see this on stones of all sizes from platform thicknesses like that to about half that size and smaller. So as we move along, we can see similar features. This would have been a mold line made on a big locking block and we can clearly see big heavy, heavy stone here, locks into place. And of course, you're missing another stone right here. And this coming out here, and the pore edge, this would have been multiple pores which have been stuck together. And this one would have been separated by the clay material. But we can clearly see nice flat blocks clearly defined edges, right angles, very useful in the construction techniques, multiple plates, very flat pores multiple times to make a platform that could withstand thousands of years before falling as it did. And the 
composition of the stones here at the structures in La Manade are identical to the composition of stones that are being discovered in Indonesia, as well as the kale and clay dependence of the geopolymer processes at all of these sites is also very clear when you look at the soil composition and the clay composition around the structures. And we have evidence all over that they built on top of the clay and used the moistness of the clay as part of a solid foundation for their stone structures. Here on the northeastern corner, we're exposing foundation structures that have the same angular features that were on the western face of the pyramid. The qualities of these stones continue to amaze us in the variety of forms and geometries that were used in the interlocking structures of these foundations, where there's no mortar, in fact, in most of the stones. All hand done, obviously, there's no single mold. All of these molds were made separately and individually by workers who were consciously using materials in a way that we can quantify and compare with what we have in Bosnia, which is remarkably similar. Although these are basalts and the Bosnian stones are sandstones, we can see that both were cast with the same casting techniques despite the difference in materials. We see here the stones can fall out separately and they were designed that way with locking features that would hold them together until they broke at which point they would fall apart. Another common feature between the Paleolithic sites in Bosnia and Gunung Padang in Indonesia and here in Lamana is the kale and clay, the orange clay that's critical to the construction processes that Dr. Javidovitz has defined at the Geopolymer Institute which really demonstrate the artificial nature of these stones. And of course, at Gunung Padang, as well as here in Lamana, we have the extremely high metal content and the distribution patterns within the stone and the extreme hardness of the stone itself, which are undeniably artificial characteristics that exceed the natural stone in many ways. The difference between these structures and a natural mountain should be very clear from a geosensing standpoint. And of course, that's what has been discovered in Bosnia, in Indonesia already, and awaits our discovery here in Lamana. The geoposition of Lamana in relation to other structures is quite amazing and became clear after looking into the variety of ancient buildings in this complex. Seventeen altogether have been mapped as a part of this preliminary research, and I'm sure more will be discovered, but as we pan across the Lamana area here, we see the Kalope River and the town of Lamana at the top and the Ilinisas National Park to the east. And the location here is marked of the Hummingbird Pyramid. As we pan down, we can see it's the entryway towards the other structures in this complex that are located much higher on the mountain. The layout of the site reflects an amazing geometric pattern that is consistent throughout all of the temples and suggests they were all built during the same period of construction. Although 
The number of them suggests that was quite a long period. And we can see their location along one degree south, which is very precise. The complex arrangement of structures that were augmented mountain peaks show alignments to Giza and Machu Picchu that are perpendicular to each other. An alignment of temples runs along this 30.0% great distance line from Giza, including Lamana at 4.00% from Nazca, and proceeding with Taos Cave, Ecuador. And there are three intervening focal points which no temples have been discovered at yet followed by Samaireni Temple in Peru, as well as Machu Picchu and Nazca. The many alignments that are being uncovered here at the temple structures in La Mana and their relationships with other ancient structures around the world, including Nazca, Machu Picchu, Taos Cave, and the Great Pyramid, are encoded and have been discovered because of the La Mana collection discovered below the La Mana Pyramid. This amazing collection includes mandala discs and the third eye pyramid stone, as well as the world map stone, which all three of them possess magnetic properties, just like the stones of the pyramids here in Lamana. They also provide for us a deeper understanding of the psychoacoustic nature of these monuments and the deeper knowledge of nonlinear standing waves and the level of high technological advancement that it still has not been equaled today.